No, man, I agree. It's been great to circle back and, and touch base on these things. You know, it's been really difficult to get the team together these last couple of months. No, man, it's been great to e-meet you too. It's been awesome to finally put a face to the name I've been seeing on the emails. <laughs> yeah, no, this has been great. Uh, if you don't mind though, I got to get back to my second job. You know, the kids are still at home, yeah. <laughs> None if I see you first, Bob. Yeah, great to see you. All right, all right, take care. All right, all right, bye, man. Today's video is brought to you by Patriot Viper and the V380 gaming headset. Here we find the gamer in their natural habitat. Though they may seem docile at first glance, the vibrant RGB lighting of the Viper V380 headset warns any observers to keep their distance. Camping the dark corners of the map, the gamer lies in wait. His sense of hearing heightened by the 7.1 surround sound, he's able to quickly locate any potential threats or prey. With the V380's noise-canceling microphone, their cries for aid will never be drowned out by the crunching of late-night onion-flavored snack rings. With their nightly frags secured, the gamer can now rest easy, for tomorrow brings another raid. But the gamer does not worry. With the aid of their companions and a lair full of Viper gaming peripherals, like the V765 mechanical keyboard and the V551 gaming mouse, tomorrow's frags are nothing more than a click away. Check out the full lineup of gear from Patriot Viper by following the link down in the video description. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. And like a lot of people, you may have been working from home the last couple years. And like a lot of businesses, they might be asking you to start coming back to the office. A lot of people probably just grabbed whatever webcam or laptop they had laying around to keep communication with the workplace. But as most communication is nonverbal, you may not be putting your best foot forward if your audio or video quality is not up to snuff. While I can't change the cultural expectations of your workplace, I might be able to help you put your best foot forward when it comes to your telecommunication. Now, you can put all the lipstick you want on a pig, but at the end of the day, if your video and audio sucks, you're not giving your boss your best foot forward. Take this webcam image, for instance. It's not exactly painting me in a flattering light. You're looking straight at my nose. The lighting is terrible. It's showing off all of my double chin. Hell, even my phone reminds me to hold the webcam higher. So today we're going to take a look at some new webcam and lighting options that might help you bring your own paradigm shift to your workplace. To start off, let's get a couple of things out of the way first. It doesn't matter if you're streaming a project proposal to a board of directors, having a Zoom meeting with department heads, or streaming Elden Ring to Twitch. A bad webcam feed is hard to watch. And there's a couple things you need to set up before you go out and spend money on a new camera. First up, turn on a light and then point it at your face. A camera is just a device for capturing light, so make sure the thing that you're capturing has plenty of it. There's no reason to go super exotic with it either. Sometimes just a desk lamp with a shade on it will do the trick and provide enough soft lighting for your face. There's no reason to go out and spend $1,200 on studio lights for your $100 webcam. And not everyone's going for that Twitch streamer look anyway. If you do want to get a dedicated video light, you can get units like this as cheap as $20 over on Amazon. The one I normally use for webcams and for podcasting is this right here from Viltrox. It is the RG08. It is just a white light with a dimmer, but it also has adjustable color temperature, meaning that you can tune the light to best reflect your skin tone, thus giving you a better image on your webcam. Where your webcam is sitting is also hugely important in how you will look on it. No one looks good with that boomer Facebook profile picture, so make sure to get the webcam up off your desk. If you're using a laptop, something as simple as a laptop stand to get the screen up near eye level will probably do the trick. If you have a USB webcam, you can set it on top of a monitor, like I'm going to set up today, or you can use something like this, which is a desk clamp with an adjustable monopod on it. Now there are purpose-built commercial options for holding a webcam that look pretty much exactly like this, but I prefer the DIY route as I find it's a little bit more versatile, especially for something as small as a webcam. I start out with this. It is a C-clamp from Utebit that will clamp on a desk that is up to two and a half inches thick, and it gives you a quarter 20 bolt on top. On top of the C-clamp, you can put a monopod or a tripod extender like I have here. This will run you about $40. However, this is beefy enough to hold my giant normal podcast camera. For a webcam, I prefer to use something like this. This is just a selfie stick that I picked up for $13 on Amazon. Best of all, it adjusts from 7 inches all the way up to 24 inches. 
And finally, an inexpensive ball head goes right on top. These will run you between five and $10, depending on the day of the week. So in all, you get a package that costs right around $35, which will save you $10 over a commercial option, and you get a very versatile holder for your webcam or your video light. If you want to use one bar to mount both your video light and your webcam, you can do that as well with a simple $10 adapter. It's a bar that goes on top of the selfie stick that connects to two ball heads, and you can mount both devices at the same time. I'd show you what it looks like, but I can't find mine right now. Now that we have our lighting set up and our webcams up in the proper position, let's get on to the main event. That is the webcam showdown, starting with the Logitech Streamcam. This is a camera that debuted first back in 2020, right around four months after we all got kicked out of the office. It's a 1080p 60 frame per second affair that runs about $105 on Amazon. The camera is available in a wide array of colors. I happen to have the gray on gray ensemble with the cloth front. It also features a built-in microphone and has two different stand options included in the box. One of them, a two axis adjustable monitor mount. The other is a standard quarter 20 base. On the back of the camera is a hardwired USB-C cable, which means you're not gonna be able to replace it if something happens to it or if you need to change the length. So best of luck to you there. Sitting at arm's length from the camera, it captures a pretty good head and shoulders profile, which is pretty much what you should be capturing if you're in a video conference. The stream cam does feature autofocus, but it's pretty much useless at this distance. You see, it can focus up close on things, sometimes when it decides to, but the infinity focus starts at about my nose and goes back from there. So don't expect any shallow depth of field like you'd find in a mirrorless SLR. Out of the box settings, for me, this image is just not impressive. Sure, there's a decent amount of detail here in my beard and hair and whatnot, but the colors are completely wrong, shifted entirely towards the cool section of the spectrum, even with the fairly warm lighting that I have in this room. Honestly, between this and the 720p webcam inside my MacBook Pro, which you saw at the beginning of this video, I'm not seeing a lot of difference here, either in image sharpness or in color rendition. Honestly, I'd save the $100 and just use my laptop if this was my only option. Thankfully, it's not your only option. Next up, coming in as the heavyweight favorite in both size and price, and from a company that's known for creating imaging gear, it's the Elgato Facecam. And let me tell you, this thing is an absolute monster, especially when size is considered. Now, this is the camera that I normally record my podcasts on. It sits right above my monitor and has a giant freaking lens on it. This is the Zcam E1, and it is a micro four thirds mount camera. The Elgato face cam is literally the same physical size as this mirrorless body. It's kind of crazy. But is the image quality enough to back up that $170 price tag that Elgato was asking? Coming in at 1080p and 60 frames per second, this is by far the smoothest operator that we have here today. Out of the box settings, as you can see, the image is absolutely beautiful. I did nothing to this camera, but plug it in and start recording. And this is the result that you get. Well, I can't say I did nothing to the camera settings. You see, when I first plugged it in, there was this weird Instagram beauty-like filter that was softening the entire image. And it really was not a good look. And it took me a while to figure out exactly what it was. It turns out it was an overly aggressive noise reduction algorithm that is on by default in the Elgato camera. Turning that off and all of a sudden we get a tacky sharp image like you see before you. But it did take some digging because it's not overly obvious what was causing the issue. What's really ironic though is I like the image as a whole much, much better than I did with the noise reduction on. You see all the little grainies if you do some pixel peeping on the monitor right now, those were actually worse with noise reduction on versus noise reduction off as you see it right now. While there is some noise present, it's not at all unbearable. And the image is beautifully sharp with a little bit of a background fade, which is kind of a nice thing to see out of a webcam. I don't know if I've ever actually been impressed with colors out of a webcam before, but credit where credit is due, I am blown away by the Elgato face cam. I mean, it kind of makes sense that a company in the imaging business and making streaming hardware would know how to accurately capture skin tones, but I don't think I've ever seen it out of a USB connected camera before. 
But it's not just the skin tones here, it's all of the colors in my image, like my shirt, which features the T568B termination order, thanks to Veronica Explains. If you want one of these shirts for yourself, I will drop a link down in the video description. Oh, and go subscribe to our channel. While the face cam doesn't have autofocus, it also doesn't need it. I'm sitting, again, about two and a half feet away at arm's length, and this is where the camera is designed to focus on. It gives a little bit of a soft background, and I am perfectly in focus and perfectly in frame. And it's something out of a webcam that I never need to worry about again. Nor will it constantly be hunting focus if I move around the frame. Of course, you're not gonna be able to hold an item up to the camera and have it be perfectly in focus, but that's really not the point of a webcam anyway. A webcam is supposed to capture you on camera, and this does a phenomenal job. The camera itself has a quarter 20 thread in the bottom of it, meaning that you can take it off the included monitor mount and put it onto a tripod head or stand of your choosing. While this is the most expensive camera in the lot today, it does have some compelling features and some phenomenal image quality, especially at $170. What's even better is Elgato's Camera Hub software. I mentioned earlier I had to dive into the settings and disable the noise reduction to get rid of the beautification that was happening on my face. Not that it needs much help. But if you've ever tried to manually configure a webcam in Windows before, you know what a colossal pain in the ass it is, as the webcams will never remember their settings. However, the Elgato cam is a little bit different. The software saves the settings to the camera, so regardless of what application you use or what PC you plug it into, it will stay configured for your environment. In my opinion, that feature alone makes this camera worth that premium price. And finally, the newcomer from a brand most known for charging iPhones, the featherweight underdog from Anchor, it is the PowerConf C200. And as you can see, this thing is wide. And I mean crazy wide. Like, I'm the same distance from the camera and you can see twice as much wide. Do be careful if you're drinking a beer on a Zoom meeting because you may not be able to set it far enough for the camera to not see it. By the way, not LTT.store. The Anchor C200 is by far the cheapest camera here today, clocking in at $70, a full $100 below the Elgato face cam. It may not sport the same 60 FPS frame rate as the other two cameras, but it is the highest resolution camera here at a full 2560 by 1440 2K. The Anchor C200 comes in at a measly $70, a full $100 cheaper than the Elgato face cam. It may not have a 60fps frame rate, capped at just 30 instead, but it also has the highest resolution of all the cameras here today, at 2560x1440. What that means is you have enough resolution and a wide enough lens that if you wanted to crop in your video a little bit, you're not going to lose a whole lot of detail. In fact, let me compare this to the Logitech camera and you get pretty much the same focal length, but as you can see, a much sharper and much better colored image. I really like the design of the C200. Not only is it the smallest by far out of all the cameras here today, the monitor mount is built in, meaning there is nothing to misplace and not be able to use your webcam anymore. There's also a built-in quarter 20 thread on the bottom of the monitor mount, meaning that you can take it directly off the monitor and put it onto a tripod head without fussing with different mounts or stands for it. Not only that, this is the only camera that I have here today that features a dedicated iris and power off switch, which means it will actually power off the camera entirely for those that are a little bit more privacy conscious. Now, the Elgato face cam does come with a lens cap, but I lost that about three months ago. Like Logitech and Elgato, Anchor has an application called Anchor Work that allows you to customize settings inside of the C200 camera. Unfortunately, it falls pretty much in the bottom of usefulness compared to the other two pieces of software. Namely being, you only get four sliders to customize your exposure. You get contrast, brightness, saturation, and sharpness. Not only that, you also don't have access to settings that I consider pretty critical, like access to a custom white balance slider, or even the ability to enable or disable autofocus, as this camera is a little hunt heavy sometimes. Also, just like the Logitech software, those changes may not survive application changes or a system reboot, so your mileage may vary there. So overall, I am genuinely a fan of the Anchor C200, even if they do have a little bit of work to do to really win me over. I would love to see the camera save settings so they would survive application changes and a reboot, and I'd like to see a little bit more customization options in the software, like being able to change autofocus and white balance settings. But as far as image quality goes, I think they absolutely nailed it, as they're right up there with the Elgato, and given a little bit more saturation would be right on par with color as well. At least they got something right. 
looking at you, Logitech. The Logitech Stream Cam does have a built-in microphone, however, as you can tell, it's not the best quality in the world. There's quite a bit of echo present, even in my sound-treated office. While it's good enough for most web conferencing, I would seriously consider investing in an external microphone if you plan on using this professionally or for game streaming. The Anchor C200 also has a built-in microphone, and most notably, it does do a better job at echo cancellation than the Logitech Stream Cam. While the echo is significantly reduced, I would say the overall quality of the voice, however, has gone down as well. So again, I would not recommend this as a primary microphone for anything other than basic web conferencing. The good news is both the Anchor and the Logitech cameras have much better microphones than the Elgato face cam. And I think that's gonna very nicely wrap up this review. So I hope you learned something in this, not only how to set up lighting and position your webcam, but potentially which webcam you should buy. And I definitely have recommendations on two out of the three that are here today. The Anchor C200 presents a fantastic value option at just $70 with its 2K resolution, super wide angle lens, all in one professional and very tidy little package. Up next, we have the Elgato Face Cam, and while it is by far the most expensive here at $170, I feel it backs up that asking price with some of the best configuration options as well as image quality in the bunch. Seriously, if you give this camera the right light, just plug it in and you're off and running. And if you do need to change a setting, it will stick in the camera and survive a system reboot. So ease of use and quality of life are definitely tops for this camera. And finally, in a distant last place, we have a washed up has-been who keeps screaming at the cloud, you know I made the C920, right? I know, Grandpa. I know. Like always, if you're interested in any of the gear that I showed off on today's video, I will have affiliate links down in the video description. Go give those a look. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Beer for today is from Matchless Brewing Company out of Tombwater, Washington. This is the Matchless Bar 2022 Westward Whiskey Barrel Aged Imperial Stout with vanilla beans and cocoa nibs added. 11%. That sound you hear is Rhett drooling all over my camera. We have a strict dress code here at Craft Computing. Shit. <laughs> ah, barrel-aged imperial stouts. This decadent imperial chocolate stout was aged in westward whiskey barrels and blended with vanilla beans and cocoa nibs. As the name suggests, this is what we imagine the chocolate river in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory would have been like if it were beer. Yes. <laughs> That's really all I can say is yes. Boy, there's almost a s'more quality to this. The the head on this kind of reminds me of graham crackers. And then, like I said, that, that sweet, rich vanilla in the middle of it, there's definitely a deep sense of like the super dark chocolate in there. And boy, does that not taste like 11%. Sorry, I have a meeting to get to in two minutes. That is dark, 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 but smooth. And a lot of vanilla kind of carrying the middle of the flavor and taking you home. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, not if I see you first, man. All right, all right, yeah, good to see you. No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what, no, uh, this is Gatorade. Yeah, Gatorade. And Coke. <laughs> yeah, Coke. Coffee. Ha, 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 ha.